The next step is to uh, cut out and fit the cockpit canopy and uh, for this I've got a couple of pairs of scissors just in case um, my straight pointed ones and I've got some curved ones probably to go around this uh, back piece uh, so we'll uh, just get started uh, for me I initially cut out all of this excess here Too neat at the minute, quite a bit of a, a overlap there but uh, we'll have to cut that out shortly. I'm then going to go to my curved scissors and I'm going to cut the back out because this sits on top of the fuselage um, and I probably will end up cutting a bit more off but for now we'll just get quite close to this edge like so and once that's done we can uh, actually tidy this up a bit I think and we can almost start to uh, fit the canopy now just to show you, it will sit somewhere like that, um, but obviously this bit here is far too high up, so uh, we're going to need to uh, start doing some uh, creative cutting in a bit, so we'll move that out of the way for now. And We'll just sit it over right. So I think starting from about here. Oops. I'll come round. We're slowly getting there. I think we could do with a bit more off the front and once we've got that we can then start going round the sides and I can either take a bit more off here and then do some cutting round here so uh, I'll uh, crack on with all of that and uh, be back once I've uh, sorted the fit out. I've now cut out and fitted the canopy and as you can see I've uh, started to go around and paint um, the window frames. Um, I've just got these two front bits to do. I've already um, masked up ready for the one side so we'll get on and try and do the other side to match which is uh, always the hardest bit um, I'm using uh, one mil thick Tamiya masking tape and I think somewhere about maybe there and then we can start the painting process
need to leave that to dry before we uh, apply a coat of blue. We now need to uh, glue the canopy onto the fuselage and to do this so I'm going to be using uh, Sino glue. It's very thin, it's just like water um, and to apply it I've got a spare bit of uh, piano wire off one of my other kits and uh, I've poured a bit out onto some plastic because it doesn't seem to react with the plastic and I'm going to gently hold the canopy in place hopefully not moving it as he moves it and then I'm going to start off by dipping my piano wire in the glue and then hopefully transferring it over like so and then that should hopefully fix that in place and give it a few seconds for the uh, glue to set and then if we pitch the front up a bit I can then start going around the back and just gently touching the glue down and then I'll do the sides as well in a short while and uh, we're about done the next step is to finish off uh, gluing these uh, decals on. We've got two big ones for the wings. We've got one for the top left and one for the bottom right wing. We've then got two on either side of the fuselage behind the cockpit. We've then got two squadron stripes which one goes on the top of the right wing the other goes on the bottom of the left wing. So um, you don't need to make mirror images of those because uh, they glue on the same surface and then we've got the tool for the tailplane with the ID numbers on and as you can see here we've got a more of a angle on the one side than on the other so the sharper angle I believe goes at the front of the tailplane so you need to get that the right way round so uh, we'll tidy all these out the way and get the plane in and uh, be back to you uh, shortly okay so as ever with uh, when I start to uh, stick on the decals uh, I normally uh, get myself into the swing of things by doing one of the smaller easier ones so we're going to start with uh, the top right wing uh, squadron stripe and it's just a case of gluing with a glue stick as best as you can and then I normally find that dabbing the glue stick onto the decal picks it up off the off my uh, cutting mat and then I'm going to try and line it up with uh, this wing spar and the edge a bit further round something like that Oops. I think that will do us and then we just go around and press down and let the glue dry. We can then turn the uh, model round, hopefully, somehow. 
and we can uh, go on to uh, one of the main wing decals. And again with this I'm going to line it up with this last rib and the top spar. He says not being able to see. Somewhere about there, I think it's going off though. to uh, yes this side yep. and get one of the side decals. This one, you might not be able to see it, but I'm going to line it up. I don't know how to hold it with the end of the motor peg mount here and this bottom rib here, somewhere about there. Yeah, something like so. And then we just need to go around and uh, do the other sides. So I'll be back shortly. Right, we're nearly there now. Um, one of the last steps to do is to fit the motor peg. As you can see, I've already uh, pierced the tissue and uh, both sides and poked it through um, but it's quite a loose fit so what the instructions say to do is to take your toothpick motor peg and then get some cyano and we're just going to dip it in there and whiz it round Let the cyano take hold and then whoops, we'll leave that to dry. For a few minutes and while that's going on I'm going to take some more of this cyano on a spare bit of my piano wire and hopefully poke it in the holes and whiz it round a couple of times which will not only strengthen the hole it will also uh, make the diameter slightly smaller and we'll do that both sides that to dry for a few minutes and I can't stress the importance of do allow this cyano to dry because if you don't and you shove uh, the motor peg in and then it dries you're not going to get the motor peg back out so I'll leave that for uh, probably 10 minutes now just to 
absolutely make sure that it's all dry. I'll then test fit it again to see how tight it is and if it's still not tight enough I'll go through that process again. I'll probably put a bit more on the motor peg itself and then uh, maybe a bit more in the holes and I'll just keep doing that until uh, I'm happy that it's quite a tight snug fit and hopefully won't just fall out when the elastic's loose. So we'll do that and get back to you with I, what I think will be the last step to complete the plane which will be to uh, oops, install the rubber motor. Now I've fitted the motor bag and it's uh, quite a squeaky fit. I've cut it down to length about 5mm over showing each side and the last job is to fit the motor. Now I've already cut this to the length I want which if you see there's the hole it's quite a bit longer but we've got to put a knot in this so we do that but then to help tighten this just put a bit of spit and then we can start to tighten it up like so and then quick measure yeah maybe a bit long but it doesn't matter that much and then Once it's all nice and tight, we can dry it off. And what we do is we get a bit of cyano and dab it in between the two lips of the rubber and gently squeeze them together and give that a few seconds to set. take my scissors and we just nip the ends off like so and the very last tasks are to uh, install it so we take the nose cone off and then I've made myself this little tool to help with uh, inserting the elastic. Um, fortunately this one you can see through the canopy to uh, where the holes are but I'll just show you what I do. I uh, get either end or get the uh, knot end like so just so it rests in and then we start by poking the motor peg through the hole. I can't do it one ended. Ho oh, hum, there we go. It's got it through. Hopefully you can see that there's a little hole oops, in between the motor, the rubber on the end here and the elastic and then I just poke it down the hole feed it through Oops. 
and then just guard it through the other side like so and that's now attached and then we can take the spinner and we can pass the rubber band onto the loop and then because the elastic is quite long I'm going to take a pair of pliers and gently close up the gap Because it's quite springy, I'm going to try my long nose pliers. Oh. And as you can tell, it's a bit fiddly, doesn't even seem to have moved at all. should stop the rubber coming out. I think that completes the build of my Vought is it F4A U? I oh, can't remember. It just uh, a case of uh, we tip it back a bit get the uh, rubber motor to go in Easier said than done. There we go. And pop the nose cone in. And there we have it. We can wind the motor up. And if you see in through the cockpit, you'll see it's tightening up. And then we can give it a test. So, we should be all finished. I hope you've enjoyed the series. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.